Okay, uh, we've been talking about uh, equilibrium here. Uh, so we're going to continue on. So last time we did uh, some examples, again, really of sort of KC and KP. And remember, they're both equilibrium constants. And really, any K value uh, is an equilibrium constant. doesn't really matter what the little subscript is. They are all basically your products over your reactants. And again here, as we've talked about, you do want to make sure that you take the coefficient as well. Uh, so the coefficient in the balance equations should be the exponents when you take something like the concentration or if you're dealing with pressures, uh, when you take the partial pressures to do that. Um, we use Kc obviously in a situation where we have concentrations. And if you're to calculate the value of Kc, it does need to be equilibrium concentrations. Uh, and obviously here we would use Kp in a situation where we're dealing with pressures. And uh, if you're gonna calculate the Kp value, they would need to be the equilibrium partial pressures of everybody that's present. I think we might've talked about it, but just in case, in general, um, when you're dealing with pressures uh, with equilibrium, you do usually want to make sure that it's in the units of atmospheres as sort of the standard unit of pressure. Uh, so later on, uh, we're going to talk about solving for equilibrium concentrations or equilibrium pressures. But you usually want to make sure that the values of those pressures are in atmospheres. Uh, even if they sort of give it to you in another unit um, and they ask you for the answer in a different unit than atmospheres, in most cases, when you do the actual calculation, you got to get it to atmospheres and then convert out of it. So it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, we also talked about the relationship between these two, although they do not usually, they can, but not in a lot of cases, will they be numerically the same value? Uh, they will tell you the same thing because again, uh, they are just an equilibrium constant, which means if you have a large value of K, uh, you should expect mainly products when you reach equilibrium. If you have a small value of K, you should expect mainly reactants. To go between them, there's that formula, Kp equals Kcrt delta N. Once again here, the Kp and Kc are equilibrium constants for concentration and pressure. R is our gas constant, and it is the uh, 0.08206 version there of it. T is our temperature in Kelvin. And as we talked about, uh, the delta N part here is really important because you do want to take the products minus the reactants. And it is just the gas molecules that are involved. So only the gas molecules on the product minus the gas molecules on the reactant side. We ended sort of talking about uh, ways that we sometimes will manipulate equilibrium reactions. Uh, we may have to, in certain cases, reverse a reaction. Uh, we may have to multiply by a common number or we may have to divide by a common number. So a couple of reminders on that is if we have a reaction and it has a certain K value, and when we do see the K value listed, it is for exactly how the reaction is written, uh, whatever's on the reaction side, whatever's on the product side. If we were to reverse the reaction, which basically means flip it around, our products become our reactants, reactants become our products. How that affects the K value is it actually will become one over the original K value. And that's because again, we basically flipped our products and our reactants. So the fraction basically flips upside down on its head. If you need to multiply by a common number, so like 2A plus 2B gives us 2C plus 2D. How that affects the K value is the K would then equal this guy squared. So whatever number you multiply by, uh, that's how you would square them. If you needed to divide by a common number, so if you divided by a common number, which in this case would be two, uh, you would take the square root of it. So if you divided, then this guy would be uh, the square root of what we needed. Actually, it would be this guy here. Thank you. Uh, so it would be that. So it'd be the square root of that guy at that point. <clears throat> and lastly, if we had two reactions that you added together,
And again, you canceled out everybody here. Remember that to get the K value for this guy, we actually multiply the K values here. So we don't add them together, but we do multiply. So um, reversing the reaction, you take one over the original K value. If you uh, multiply by a common number, uh, you take that original K value to that common number. If you needed to divide by a common number, you take that K value to the root of that number. And lastly, if you add several reactions together, you multiply the K values together. Any questions on any of those manipulations there? <clears throat> yeah. Because uh, uh, I was just using the example that was there. So originally, uh, here when we multiply by 2, originally this was K1 I had there. So we would take K1's value and square it. And then I was just using the same equation, so I didn't have to rewrite it. So when we divided by two going from here to here, uh, we would take the square root of whatever this K2 value would have been in that case. So I was trying not to write it twice. <laughs> Other question? Yeah. All right, so let's do a couple here, just a couple more to make sure. So uh, we're going to be looking for the uh, K value here, the top equation based on the two bottom ones. Calculate what. Uh, so remember on these, the best idea is just to keep it simple. Uh, you just want to make sure you get everybody on the correct side of the arrow and make sure that you have enough of everybody and obviously keep track of whatever you did. Uh, so for me personally, I would look at this and go 2E. Uh, obviously, this is the only equation with E in it. It's on the uh, right hand side in the equation on the bottom, but I do need it on the left hand side. So I do need to know that I'm going to reverse it. I also need not just one of the E's, but I do need two of the E's. So really to this bottom one here, we're going to need to do a reverse and multiply by two to get it to where we need. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to reverse the reaction and also multiply it by two, which would give me 2E plus 2F goes to 2C plus 2D. Once again here, I did several things. I reversed it, which means I'm then going to take one over the K value. I also uh, multiplied it by two, which means I'm also going to square it as well. So again, you got to keep track of everything that you did there. Uh, the next thing uh, to look at is F, and that kind of took care of F as well. So we're good on that. We then see A on the right-hand side, and this equation has A on the left-hand side. So we do need to reverse that equation. And in this case, we actually just need one A, so we're good. So reversing that equation there will give me 2C plus 2D, A plus B. And in this case, I just reversed it, which means I'm gonna take one over the K value, and that's all that I need to do in that case. And if I did that correctly, this should give me the equation that we're looking at above there. Uh, we're going to get rid of a couple of C's, a little bit of D actions going out of there. That's going to give us uh, 2E on the left plus 2F. Now to the right-hand side of the arrow, we got an A plus AB, and that obviously matches the equation that we are looking at. At this point, we actually want to multiply our K values together. We do not add them. Uh, so if you want to get some numbers there before you do that, you can. So uh, we'll take one divided by 20 and then square it. And that will get us uh, something like 0 0.0025. We'll take one divided by 100. And that's going to give us uh, 0 0.01. So that means that for the K for the overall should be 0 0.0025 times 0 0.01. And that is going to get us a K value of like 2.5 times 10. One, two, three, four, five, negative five, I think. In terms of our K value, yeah. <clears throat> Any questions on any of those steps there? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so uh, whenever you have to reverse a reaction like this, so you need like the products on the reactant side or vice versa, 
Uh, what that does to the K value basically is it takes the uh, inverse of it. So one over the K value is always what you do when you reverse a reaction. So kind of like in uh, delta H, when you reverse a reaction, you change the sign. But here with K, what actually happens with the K value is actually the one over the K value is what you end up getting. Other questions? <clears throat> Try one more here, make sure. All right, so we're gonna shoot for the top equation here based on the bottom two. We'll use uh, non-letters this time. <laughs> All right. Not the correct K values, but we'll just use it for this example. <clears throat> Okay, let's take a look. Uh, so same approach. Uh, so here I got N2 on the left, and I do have it on the left, uh, but I do not have the right amount of them. Uh, I do need two, and I only got a half. Uh, so to get me to two, I actually need to multiply this guy by four. Yeah, do that. And if I do that, multiplying that thing by four, again, everybody that's there, that gives me uh, two N2. Uh, plus that's uh, 12 divided by 2, 6H2 gives me 4NH3. Now, in this case, uh, we kept it the way it was, but we did multiply by 4, which means we would then take the K value to the fourth power because we did that. Uh, that took care of the N2. H2O, I got six of them on the left-hand side. I got two of them here. That means we need to probably multiply this guy by three in this case. That would give us uh, six H two O, six H two plus three O two, and in this case we uh, multiplied by three. So then we would uh, cube that one in that case, and hopefully <laughs> I'm out of equations. We did this correctly. Uh, we'll get some H2 that will do some canceling, and I think that's it. That will give us uh, 2N2 plus 6H2O. Uh, gives us 4NH3 on the right-hand side plus 3O2, so that looks good. Now, in this case, we are, again, going to multiply both of these numbers together, so we'll take a 411 and uh, take it to the fourth power there. And that's going to give me uh, basically uh, 2.85 times 10 to the 10. I'm going to multiply that by what I get here, which is 0.345 cubed. And that gives me uh, 4.11 times 10 to the minus 2. So we'll multiply both of those numbers together here. And that will give me a, a pretty good one here. A one point, uh, Go with 1.17 times 10 to the something. One, two, three, four, nine, I believe, if I counted that right. I guess. Any questions on that? Yeah. Uh, whenever you add two equations together, what ends up happening is you're actually multiplying them. So, for example, if we did have something like this, A plus B, goes to C plus D, and we wrote the K value. Uh, that would be C times D over A times B. Right. And then if we had uh, C plus D goes to E plus F, the K would be E times F divided by C times D. So when we put these together, it gives us this reaction where the K value expression would be E times F divided by A times B. And that's basically achieved by multiplying those two expressions together. So when you multiply those together, they cancel and it gives you this E and F and A and B. So that's why when we add equations together, uh, we actually multiply the K values rather than add them in that particular case. Other questions? 
All right, questions on obviously how to solve these, manipulate them. You might have to do that. You might have some problems. Again, the key part here is just to make sure everybody gets to the correct sides and you just keep track of everything that you did there. <clears throat> right. And then obviously we multiplied here by numbers to get the correct numbers that we were looking for in the overall reaction. <clears throat> All right, then let us continue on here. Maybe. All right, so these are kind of summarizes what we've been doing. Uh, again, when we do write the equilibrium constant expression, which is the K, uh, we do typically express it in one of two ways, either as concentrations, which are molarity, or if they are pressures, again, it does need to be in atmospheres. And remember, right, 760 millimeters of mercury, 760 torr is an atmosphere. So again, those are some other common units. We do include only, as we talked about, aqueous stuff and things that are gases. Anything that's a solid or a liquid is not included in the equilibrium expression. It is one of the few things in chemistry where there are typically no units, so it's just a number. And again, that number does uh, give you an idea as to uh, do you expect mainly products or reactants at equilibrium? The only thing that will affect the actual value of the equilibrium constant is temperature. So if you do change the temperature, that is the only thing that will actually change the value. And when we're talking about that, for example, is if we had a K value at say 25 degrees Celsius and a K value at 40 degrees Celsius, these two K values at the two different temperatures uh, would be different values. But if you did a whole bunch of experiments and kept it at 25 degrees Celsius and didn't change the temperature, uh, you would get the same K value every time, or you should. And if you did nothing uh, but keep it at 40 degrees Celsius and did a whole bunch of experiments, you should just still have the same K value. But in comparison between the two different temperatures, uh, you would actually have different values of K. And again, K is uh, whatever the reaction is written, that is what the K value is for. We uh, just talked about if we add up two or more equations or reactions, we multiply the K value. Again, if we multiply by a common number, we're going to take it to the power. And if we divide by a common number, we would take the root of it. All right. I think we also talked about this, but just once again, to reiterate this idea, again, sometimes people have a really hard time understanding the idea of when we do have a reaction. We could do the same reaction as long as the temperature is the same all the way through. We could start with all reactants and we would get the same K value as if we started with all products and no reactants, we would get the same K value. If we started with some reactants, some products, we would get the same K value. So it doesn't matter you know, how much you start of, out with in terms of products, reactants, all products, all reactants. Um, it will always come to rest of the rate of the forward reaction to the rate of the reverse reaction with the same proportion of products to reactants. So I might've done this, but the idea is, you know, if you took eight divided by two, that gives you four. If you had four divided by one, that gives you four. If you had 16 divided by four, that gives you four. So although, they are all different fractions or ratios, if you will, or different numbers. Uh, it does come out to the same sort of ratio of basically four when it's all said and done. So there's many ways to get there. And that's the same thing with the equilibrium constant. People always feel like, hey, I did more, or I started with more reactants in this experiment versus the other one. I should get a different K value. And that's not the case. So always come out to rest at the same uh, sort of uh, ratio of products to reactants. Any questions? <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about a different letter here for a second, and that is actually Q. And Q is what is referred to as the reaction quotient. And the Q is calculated the exact same way as you calculate the equilibrium constant. So Q is done the exact same way. It is your products over your reactants. And it's done the same way as K, so it's calculated the same as K. That also means that you still use the coefficients as the exponents. So just like you would do in the K expression, 
you take those coefficients as the exponents, uh, you would do the same thing from the balanced equation. Q is used in really two situations, and one we'll talk about here, and one we'll see a little bit later on, but we oftentimes will use K, uh, Q, I'm sorry, we'll use Q in a, just a straight up Q type problem, which is two questions to sort of ask. First question that's asked in a Q type problem is, is the system at equilibrium? So you can use the value of Q and the value of K to help you just answer that simple question of this system is either at equilibrium or not at equilibrium. The second thing that Q can allow you to know is if it is not at equilibrium, which way it needs to go to reach equilibrium? Does it need to make more products? Does it need to make more reactants to reach equilibrium? So I call that sort of just a straight up Q type question. Those are usually the two things you're asked. Is it at equilibrium? And kind of which way it needs to go to reach equilibrium if it is not. If we calculate Q and it is greater than not at equilibrium, and in order to reach equilibrium, it needs to actually make more reactants. Uh, I always think of it going the opposite way of where the greater than or less than sign is, as long as you got Q on the left-hand side. If you calculate Q is equal to K, uh, that means that the system is at equilibrium at that point. If you calculate Q and it's less than K, that means again, it's not at equilibrium and to make, uh, to reach equilibrium, you need to make more products in this case. So we use Q in that situation uh, to help us understand, is the system really at equilibrium? Now, the other place where Q is sometimes calculated is if you are given a problem and maybe you don't know you're at equilibrium or not, or you're asked to calculate maybe equilibrium sort of concentrations, uh, you could calculate Q and see if you are at equilibrium, but more importantly, you could see which way you need to go. A little later on, when we talk about doing some calculations, that could be helpful. Um, and that's the second place where you can use Q. By the way, can I calculate Q if I don't have everybody's concentrations? I cannot. So that's a really big hint. If you're not given everybody's concentrations, you definitely are pressures. You can't calculate Q. So you do need to be given that information, and you typically be given the equilibrium constant value. So let's take a look at one here. We start a reaction with uh, 0.24 moles of N2, 3.21 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of H2, and 6.42 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of NH3. We toss that in a 3.5 liter vessel. The KC value is 1.2. Is the system at equilibrium? And if not, which way does it need to go to reach equilibrium? So take a few minutes or so, we'll see what you come up with here. All right, let's take a look. Uh, so once again, Q is calculated the exact same way as you would do K. Uh, so in this case, uh, Q would equal our products, which is NH3. And we would square it just like we do with K using the coefficient. Uh, that would then be divided there by N2, which the coefficient is one, and our H2, which the coefficient is three. We do need the concentrations, and here we have moles and volume. So we do need to convert everybody into molarity by taking the moles divided by the volume. So let us do that for each of these here. So we have an N2, and our N2 is 0.249, looks like. Moles divided by the liters, which is 3.5 liters. And that gives us uh, 0.249 divided by 3.5. And we'll call it uh, 0 0.0711 molar. We'll do the same thing for H2. Uh, H2 is 321 there. 3.21 times 10 to the minus 2 moles divided by 3.50 liters. 3.21 exponent negative 2 divided by 3.5 going to give us uh, 0 0.00917 molar. And lastly, we will do it for NH3 here, uh, which is, I'll come down here, NH3. 
looks like uh, 6.42 times 10 to the minus four moles divided by 3.50 liters. And I'll get us a 0 0.000183 molar. We now have everything we need to uh, go into our Q expression. So we'll put our numbers in. Uh, so our NH3, 0 0.000183. Again, we're going to square it. Divided by our N2, 0 0.0711 and our H2, 0 0.00917, and not forgetting to cube that guy on the bottom. And if we do all that there, 0 0.000183 squared, divided by 0 0.0711, and divided by 0 0.00917, and that guy's going to be cubed in this case. Going to give us a Q value here of 0 0.611. First off, any questions on that calculation there? <clears throat> we now want to compare our Q value to our K value. And in this case, our Q value is less than, greater than, equal to, it is less than, it will head the opposite of where that's pointing. And that means that we actually will need more products here to reach equilibrium, yeah? Any questions on that there? <clears throat> so this type of problem here is what I would consider, like I was saying earlier, kind of just a straight up Q type question. Uh, those are usually the two things that they ask you in these type of questions is, are you at equilibrium? And if not, which way do you need to go to reach equilibrium? Any questions on reaction quotient? We do see it pop up in a number of places and a few chapters here. Uh, so it's a good thing to keep in mind. <clears throat> Questions on it. All right. All right. Then uh, we should then talk about really the big calculation of the season here, which is uh, calculating equilibrium concentrations or pressures. Uh, so if we are not given equilibrium concentrations or pressures, but we're given initial concentrations or pressures, uh, we do need to calculate it. And usually when we do this, we will have one sort of unknown, and that unknown is usually represented with an X. And uh, we use that to calculate the change that's going to occur in this reaction. So the way that we do these type of problems is we use what is referred to as an ice table. And an ice table stands for initial change and equilibrium. Ran out of room there, but that's equilibrium basically. <clears throat> go this way, there you go, equilibrium. <laughs> um, now you might've used ice tables when you did things like limiting reagents, anyone? No, nobody teaches it that way. They should, because then you'll be prepared when you come here and you've seen it before. All right, but if you haven't used it, we're going to talk about how we use this type of situation. So what happens is we are going to basically have a reaction. Choose our generic type of reactions going on here. A plus B goes, say, the 2C in this case. All right, we got like a K value that's like, say, 58 or something like that. All right, so let's say initially you're given that initially you have, you know, say, two molar A, and initially you got like eh, four molar B. <clears throat> so what's going to happen in this situation is you're going to do the ice table and clearly nothing is going to work right if you do not have the right reaction so or the equation so the equation is really important and it should obviously be balanced uh, so you want to make sure that you write the correct reaction or equation down uh, in future chapters you'll need to kind of come up with the equation yourself uh, so you always want to make sure you got that equation and it's balanced. 
So initially here, and that's what the I stands for, we would use our I, and we would put our initial concentrations in, which would be two molar, I think, for that guy, made four molar for that guy. Now, in this particular problem here, we did not have any information about C, right, which is our products. So it is safe in those cases to assume that you're starting with nothing on that side. So if you're not given any information about the products, it's pretty safe to assume that you are done in terms of products, you have nothing going on. The change here is really the thing that we are looking to solve for in most ice tables is the change ultimately. And that usually will allow us to solve for everything that we are actually looking for. So we wanna think logically about what's going on in this situation. So logically speaking, if I have all products and I have no reactants, uh, I just said that backwards. Let me say it the right way this time. And logically, I'll cut it out later in the video, it'll be okay. So logically speaking, if we started with all reactants and no products in this case, uh, we would expect this reaction to head in which direction? It should head towards the product side, right? To the right-hand side. That means as this reaction is taking place, should we expect more reactants or less reactants? Less, right? And we should expect more products to be formed. So in an ice table, we represent sort of the decreasing of concentration or pressure with minuses and the increasing in concentration or pressures with plus signs. And the unknown part of that is actually how much is changing. And we represent the unknown uh, with an X. So the unknown part here is actually represented with an X. So this is going to be minus X. This would then be minus X because it's decreasing. And this would be plus two X because it's increasing. The other really important part of doing this ice table like this is as you might've seen there, the two came from the coefficient. The reason we didn't put any numbers here is the number in front of each of these are one, right? So that's basically one X basically. So we don't just put it one. Uh, so that's why we have no numbers here. The reason why you need to put those numbers in the X part is it takes care of everybody's favorite thing, stoichiometry, yeah? Mole to mole relationship. That's basically what those numbers represent. So if you do not put the coefficients in on that X line there or the change line, uh, you will have the wrong mole to mole relationship and thus you will have the wrong answer when it's all said and done. So really important coefficients gets carried down to the change line. We use X to represent the change. Any questions on that so far? <clears throat> all right, so the equilibrium line is not too bad. We're just gonna pretty much carry everybody down here. So two minus X, four minus X and a little two X action going there. So at this point, what we need to do is be able to actually solve for what X is. And what's going to help us do that is the equilibrium expression. So in this case, K would equal C squared divided by A divided by B. And that would equal in my made up example here, 58. Yeah. At this point, what we would do is we would take everybody that is at the equilibrium line here. And we would actually put it into the respective spots. So we would put all those guys into the respective spots there. And if we did that in this example, uh, we would end up with 2x squared divided by 2 minus x times 4 minus x equals 58. I'm not sure if you could see it, but there's some math coming here. Yes, <laughs> a little foil method, factory method, whatever they call it these days here, right? We got to go in and out, right? In and out. Sounds good for lunch. We'll do that there. There you go. Uh, so we got to factor all that good stuff. All right, so we won't finish this problem, but you do need to go through basically and mathematically solve for X because I just made up numbers, so I'm not quite sure how good it'll come out here. But there is a couple of ways that we could do this, and we'll see a few different approaches to solve these type of problems. 
But for us, the most complicated way that you would have to solve this is the quadratic formula. Yeah. Maybe people remember that. That's a little minus b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac. I know, bad flashback day here. Divided by a 2a. That is based off of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, I think. I know it's reassuring when I say think. So that is a, b, and c here. And that is where you get those numbers, right? And obviously, if they are negative, you keep the negative as you go into uh, the equation. By the way, when you solve this uh, quadratic, you get how many answers? You do get two x values, right? And in our case, uh, obviously, only one x value would be a good one. How you know which one's the bad one? Well, frankly, you put it back into here and you get a negative number, which you can't have a negative concentration or you can't have obviously a negative pressure. So whichever one, if you would to put it back in there, uh, gives you that negative number would not be the correct one. You would use the other one. But however you solve it, and you might not always have to solve it using the quadratic formula, that might be the most difficult type of way maybe, or maybe the easiest for people. But when you do solve for X, you do put those X values back into the equilibrium line. So once you're able to mathematically solve for X, uh, you would put all those X values back into here. And at that point, you would be able to get actual numbers for what the equilibrium concentration of A would be in this case, what B would be in this case, and what C would be in this particular case. Any questions on that there? <clears throat> okay. So it is fun with math time. All right, here we go. So let's do one here together, see how this all works. All right, so we have this uh, reaction here. We got BR2 goes to 2BR. The equilibrium constant is seven. Uh, if the initial concentration of BR2 is 0.663, we're looking for everybody's equilibrium concentration. So first off, we will write our K expression here. So our K would be our products, which in this case is BR squared divided by BR2, and that equals lucky number seven there. Here, we're going to set up our ice table. So we'll start with the reaction here, BR2 to 2BR. So initially, again, we are only given the concentration of our BR2, which is 0.663, and we're given nothing here for our products. So once again, because we are not given anything for our products, we could safely assume that this reaction should be heading in this direction, which means that the change in this case, we should expect these guys to get less. So that's going to be minus X because the coefficient here is 1. That will then be plus 2x because the coefficient here is 2. That means when we reach equilibrium, we will end up with 0.663 minus x and 2x. Any questions on the ice table here so far? <clears throat> All right, so clearly here we want to solve for x. So we're going to again take our equilibrium line and we're going to put it into our expression that's up here. So that is going to give me uh, 2x squared divided by 0 0.663 minus x, and that is going to equal 7. I'm going to do a couple of things here in a row. I'm going to first take everything that's on the bottom and multiply it to the other side. I'm also going to do the squaring of that part as well. So when I do that, that will give me 4x squared up on top. And I now multiplied everything to the other side. And that will give me 0.663 times 7, which would be 4.641 minus 7x. Any questions on that there? <clears throat> I'm now going to combine everybody to one side of the equation. 
it doesn't really matter, but most people keep the X squared positive. You don't really have to, but most people do keep that X squared positive. So that means I'm gonna take everybody here and pretty much bring it to the other side, right? So that would then give me four X squared plus seven X minus 4.641 is equal to zero. That is my quadratic sort of equation. That is going to be my A value, my B value, and my C value at this point, right? All right. So if we go into the quadratic here, which again is X is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A, that will get us uh, minus B, which is minus seven plus or minus. If you do everything that's inside the square root part on your calculator, I'm gonna do right now, let's see, that is seven squared uh, minus four times A, which is four times C, which is negative 4.641. That is gonna give me a hundred and 23.256 inside the square root. I then will take the square root of it, a little square root action, and that is gonna give me 11.10 if you take the square root of that. That will all be divided by two times A, which is eight, I believe. Try that without the calculator, we'll hope for the best. Any questions on that? So the 123 comes from putting in all the numbers here before you take the square root. Yeah. After you take the square root, 11.1, .1 basically. <clears throat> this is going to give us two values. We're going to do the positive part first. So we'll go plus first. So I'm going to take minus 7 plus 11.1 .1 and divide it by 8. And that's going to give me an X value of 0 0.5125. I'm going to then do the subtract version of it. Uh, maybe so I'm going to do this guy next. And that's going to go minus 7 minus 11.1 .1 divided by 8 gives me a X value of negative 2.2625. Any questions on any of that math there? <clears throat> All right. These are our two possible X values, and only one of them is a good one. The one that is the bad one is probably the... It is the negative because technically if we took this negative and put it back into here, I'm going to get a negative concentration. should be our correct X value. So that X value of 0 0.5125 should be a winner. That means that we now have the X value here and we have the X value here, which is the same X value. And we can just put them in to get our concentrations. So our concentration of BR2 at equilibrium uh, should be 0. 663 minus X, which gives us 0 0.663 minus 0 0.5125.663 minus 0.5125. That is not right, put a decimal in there. I'll try that again. There we go. Uh, we'll go with uh, 0 0.151 molar. That also means for the concentration of BR, it would equal two times X, which means that would be two times 0.5125. It gives us, we'll call it 1.03 molar in this case. And those should be our equilibrium concentrations of this guy at this point. Any questions on that? Couple of things. First off, when you do the quadratic, 
you could get a positive number and a negative number. Uh, you could get two positive numbers and you could get two negative numbers. So, you know, you want to make sure you check and to make sure you get that. You could get any of those sort of combinations. The other thing that's really nice about this is it's math, which means you could kind of check to make sure you didn't screw up. How could I check to make sure I didn't maybe screw up anywhere? What did I just calculate at the end here? The what concentrations? Those are now the equilibrium concentrations, right? Which means if I take those equilibrium concentrations and I throw them into here, what number should I get? To get about seven, yeah? And if you do, you'll get about 7.02, which is pretty close. Won't be exact, but it should be pretty close in the ballpark. It's a good idea if you got the time to throw those numbers in there to make sure you didn't screw up. I would say this is a fairly easy quadratic one. There's much more complicated ones, a lot more factoring going on and stuff like that, that you could make a mistake somewhere. So at the end, it is a good idea to throw those values back into the equilibrium constant. And again, you may not get exact number on the nose, but you should definitely be in the ballpark with rounding a little bit above it, maybe a little bit below it but it shouldn't be significantly different when it's all said and done. Any questions on that there? So let's talk about a couple other important things to keep in mind as you go through these type of problems. First off, um, this is what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about pressures. You could absolutely do this type of calculation with a KP value and partial pressures as well. So you could do that in an ice table. And that is definitely the time when if you were doing an ice table with pressures, you want to make sure they're in atmospheres and do the ice table part of the calculation with it in atmospheres. Again, even if they give it to you in some other unit and want the answer in some other unit, you got to put it in atmospheres when you go into the ice table. So it has to be in atmospheres if you're dealing with pressure in the ice table, and then you got to do the conversions afterwards. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second important thing here is this is another place, these type of calculations where Q that we just talked about could come into play. If you are given the concentrations of everybody, so remember in an equilibrium situation, you could start with everybody. You have a little bit of everybody there to begin with. You want to first determine whether or not you're at equilibrium. The answer would probably be no, because it wouldn't be much of an equilibrium problem if it were at equilibrium to start with. But more importantly, let's say we did Q and it said, and you're not at equilibrium, but to reach equilibrium, you need to make more reactants. Which part of my table would change? If I did a problem where we're just use this table here, for example, and it said, hey, to reach equilibrium, you actually need to go this way. What would change? If we're going to the left-hand side, the amount of reactants, are they increasing or decreasing? They are increasing, which means instead of minus, those guys would be pluses and the amount of products would be decreasing, yeah? So you could be heading in the other direction which means your minuses and positives would actually be reversed in that case. I would say it's probably a rare case that you come across maybe something like that, but you can. Uh, and that's why it's important to calculate Q in a situation if you are given like kind of everybody's initial amounts. Not so much in these type of problems to tell you whether or not you're at equilibrium or not, but to tell you which way you're actually going to reach equilibrium so you can feel confident about that. I would say probably in 90... 8% of the time, you could go on autopilot and go, it's going to the products. But there are some cases where it might be actually going in the other way. So you do want to keep that in mind as you're doing it. Any questions on that stuff there? All right. I did one. Now you do one. There we go. All right. Let's see this one here. We're starting with 0.5 moles of H2, 0.5 moles of I2. We're going to toss those into a one liter flask. What is the equilibrium concentrations of everybody? How you're doing? Uh, so obviously we've got some concentrations here. 
Uh, we want some equilibrium concentrations at the end. So we'll write our equilibrium expression, which should be our products, which is HI. Again, we want to square it because of the coefficient divided by H2 and I2, and that's going to equal 54.3. We obviously need to uh, convert these guys into concentrations, which is not too bad here since it's all one liter. Uh, so the concentration of H2 uh, would equal 0 0.5 moles divided by one liter gives us 0 0.5 molar and our i2 would be the same in this case 0 0.5 moles divided by one liter all right any questions so far all right i'm gonna flip the page here so i got some more room to write let me just rewrite the equation uh, we got H2, I won't use those arrows, plus I2 uh, gives us our 2HI. Once again here, we got the K is 54.3. All right, so we're going to do our ice table. So initially here, 0 0.5 molar, 0 0.5 molar for that guy and zero. Here we uh, do not have any products. So like we've been talking about, we can safely assume that the reaction is heading to the right-hand side. That means our reactant should be minuses. So it's gonna be minus X, minus X. And our product should be positive, which would be plus two X. Once again, we wanna make sure we don't overlook the coefficients there. Taking everybody down here to our equilibrium line, going to give us a 0 0.5 minus X. 0 0.5 minus x and 2x. Any questions on the ice table or anything? <clears throat> that once again is going to go into our equilibrium expression that we wrote on the other page there, which was our hi squared divided by our h2 and our i2 equaling our 54.3. Putting those guys in gets us uh, 2x squared divided by 0 0.5 minus X times 0 0.5 minus X is equal to 54.3. So again, we just took the equilibrium line, slapped it into our expression. Now we're going to solve it mathematically here. And if you had all day and you like the quadratic, you could do that with all that factoring, but do you need to? You actually do not in this case, because perhaps you recognize that it is actually a perfect square on both sides. So you could take the square root of both sides, which would make the math a lot easier, I'm assuming. Yes, um, but you could go and do it without doing that if you liked it. When we do that on the left-hand side, that's gonna give us a two X. That's gonna give us a 0 0.5 minus X. And the thing I personally forget to do most of the time is actually take the square root on that side. So let's take the square root of the other side there, 54.3. And that's going to give us 7.3689. I'm then going to multiply everything I got there to the other side. And when I do that, I will end up with uh, 2x equals... Uh, Call it uh, 3.684 minus 7.3689x. I'm going to bring my x this way just to keep it positive, And that would give me a 9.3689x is equal to 3.684. I'll take it a couple extra digits there on my calculator. I'm then going to divide the 9 point something to the other side. I'll add those up here, four and two. <clears throat> and that would then give me an X value. Hopefully here, if I didn't mess it up, 9.3689, I think is what I said, of 0 0.393 in this case. Any questions on that so far? <clears throat> that is not our answer, right? But that is the X value that we see in the equilibrium line. This X value here is that X, that X, and that X right there. So now that we have it, we could actually get the equilibrium concentrations. So the concentration of H2 would actually be
be 0 0.5 minus X, which is 0 0.393. So that is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.393, 0 0.107 molar. I2 would actually be the same in this case, 0 0.5 minus X, which would give us 0 0.107 molar. And lastly here, somewhere to put it. Let me see where I can put it. Let me I'll get rid of that for now. And I'll just put it there. And the last one there would be uh, HI, which would equal two times X, 0 0.393. And that would give us two times 0 0.393. 786.786 molar in this case. <clears throat> Any questions on that one? Once again here, if we took our values now at equilibrium and put it back into our expression, 0.786 squared divided by uh, 0.107 and divided by 0.107 gives us about 53.96, which is about 54. So, you know, with rounding, we're pretty much correct, hopefully. Question on any of those steps. So, you know, don't overlook the easy move. Yeah, <laughs> you don't necessarily have to do the quadratic in every sort of situation, uh, but you could, and it should give you the same answer if you chose to do it that way. Any questions on that? All right, we'll lay it up there for now.